Hey guys, Andy with Get Awesome Gaming here, back with another Boss Tips video for Neo 2. Today we will be tackling the third boss, Yatsu no Kami. I'll just be calling him Yatsu through this video, by the way. The overall strategy for this boss will be very different than the previous two bosses, as I found this one is more of a balancing certain conditions in the fight so that the encounter doesn't overwhelm the player. I myself struggled with this boss until I adjusted my strategy to compensate for running into the same problem with each attempt. First off, the arena you fight Yatsu in has two pools of venom on the floor. It doesn't meaningfully infect the fight, it's just to be mindful and try avoid standing or running through those two pools of venom. Now let's quickly run through the boss's moves. Starting off, Yatsu has a poison spit. He lobs a ball of venom that leaves a pool on the floor for a short time. Dodge and don't stand in it, pretty simple stuff there. Yatsu will spawn waves of knives. They will either converge on you, shoot out in a straight wall towards the player, or spread out with the ones closest to you attempting to home in on you. And in all cases, a timely dodge or sidestep is your best option. And when the boss is in his no arm state, which I will cover later, dodging towards the boss through the knives is one of the opportunities to damage him. Next, the boss can attempt to impale the player with his horn, followed by a swipe of his tail. He normally will only attempt this move when the player is within a certain range of him, but when he loses one of his arm snakes, he will begin to close distance with the player to attempt the move. Also, Yatsu will slam his tail around him defensively when the player is in close proximity to the boss. If you look for a specific damage windows in the fight though, it's unlikely you see this move much as the times that you will be damaging the boss will be when he leaves himself most exposed. He has a grapple attack like all the other bosses, but it seemed that he telegraphs this pretty heavily, and if you successfully avoid it, he is open to getting in a few unanswered attacks on him, so it's one of the opportunities to look for as far as damage windows go. He has two moves he will do if the player is within range, where he will extend both arms to try and grapple the player, which drags the player closer to the boss, and it also has a very slight stun effect. The other is an alternating series of punches he will do if the player is close. Yatsu has two attacks where his snake arms will tunnel under the ground and attempt to come up underneath the player, and one of these moves is key to beating him while the other is not as much. The less essential move, he tunnels the snakes and they emerge in unison in a crossing pattern. He tends to do this move when the player happens to be within a certain distance of the boss. It's pretty avoidable as long as you're not locked in an animation as it happens. The more important move he does when the player is at range. He buries both of his snakes into the ground and they emerge one after the other. This is the largest damage window the boss leaves for the player and is the most important move to defeating the boss. I however suggest that you approach this move in a very specific manner which I will cover momentarily. Finally, move wise I want to talk about the boss's burst moves. His first burst move he initiates defensively when he slams his head into the ground if the player is too close. If you dodge the move there is an opportunity to get some damage in there. His second burst move he charges the player with his horn across the room. It can be easily sidestepped and the player can get damage while the rest of the body is within range. If the player is towards the edge of the arena though, be aware as the boss will spam the charge burst attack up to three times and due to the player's proximity to the boss, avoiding the subsequent moves can be slightly more problematic. You may notice I didn't mention burst counters in talking about either of these moves and for a very specific reason. A successful burst counter damages the boss's key, and when the boss runs out of key, that is most likely to trigger the boss to enter his defiled state. In the boss's defiled state, his snake arms separate from him, and they create yokai portals all over the arena and spit poison at you whenever they get the opportunity. They aren't individually significant threats, but the boss will remain in his defiled state until they are both destroyed. In trying to focus and burn down the arm snakes while avoiding the main boss who is still trying to attack you was the biggest challenge in the fight for me, which is why I don't suggest purposely damaging large chunks of the boss's key until the two snakes are eliminated, or at least close to being eliminated, prior to the boss entering his defiled state. This brings me back to the second snake tunneling move I mentioned prior. After the second snake emerges, you can attack both the boss and the snake arms. I found it very helpful to alternate between the sides as you attack the boss to try and keep the damage on the two snake arms as equal as possible. The reason being twofold, because when Yatsu has one arm, he stops doing the move and starts trying to close distance with the player. And also, if Yatsu enters his defiled state before the snake arms are destroyed, they generally are at least at low health and can be dealt with with either one quick strike or even a ranged attack that allows you to destroy them while keeping tabs on where Yatsu is. Also, one note here, if the boss happens to drop both snakes when he enters his defiled state, if you happen to be close enough, Mizuki's Soul Core move can wipe out both snakes right at the beginning of the phase. 
Also, as always, I recommend using your yokai shift during the defiled state, particularly if the boss has snake arms on the field. Yatsu still has openings during this phase between spawning knives, missed grapples, and his burst move charge, so he is slightly more dangerous with no arms than with both arms. Essentially, that was the trick that helped me from struggling for several attempts to downing the boss without breaking much of a sweat. As long as you can avoid the boss entering his defiled state with two healthy snakes, the fight wasn't too much of a problem. Once the boss leaves his defiled state, he will respawn his snake arms and you can continue to repeat the same general strategy until he is dead. Well that's it for me guys, and as always, if you enjoyed this video, a like would be super appreciated, and if you want to catch more of these tip videos, consider subscribing and hitting that bell icon for notifications. Until next time guys, get awesome.